Let's get some reaction from actual voters to all this. Uh, first of all, Kerry Smith, she voted for Obama in 2008 and 2012, I understand, plans to vote Trump. This time she is in Austin, Texas. Then we have uh, Gabriel Montalvo, he's a student and a Trump supporter. He's in New York. And then Anna Borsking, she's a student in Lexington City, Virginia, and I believe a Democrat. First of all, let's go to Kerry. Did this feel to you like a, a good way to choose a president and a vice president? I wouldn't say it's a good way. I agree with some of your commentators that I think most people's opinions are unfortunately already made up. And so there's probably just a small minority of people who remain to be swayed. And I, I do think this debate was better, more informative than the presidential one. But I, I've, I kind of I watch it and I just I wonder where we're at as a country, <laughs> that this is how we decide. But interesting, Kerry, I think you were seriously distressed when Mr. Trump won in 2016, and really, you've now flipped his way. Yes, I was one of those people who cried in 2016, and I say that kind of laughing now because it's been a strange trip these four years. Uh, I've, I've finally, I, I call myself now a reluctant deplorable. I'm someone who, I'm still liberal. Um, I've, I've, I'm trying to choose the most liberal candidate on the ballot, and I have unfortunately view the Republican ticket at this point being more liberal than the Democratic one. So that's where I'm at. Anna, can we just talk to you for a moment? I know you've moved. You're a Democrat. I think that's fair to say. But you have moved from Pete Buttigieg to Joe Biden. Why and what are you thinking generally about tonight? Um, I think that Kamala Harris proved to be a strong vice presidential candidate tonight. Um, I moved to, from Pete Buttigieg to Joe Biden because I think Joe Biden will restore decency in America. I think we're in a really dangerous position right now in our country. Um, I think we're moving more and more away from democracy. I think Joe Biden has proven that he will fight for the American people and he will be a servant to all, no matter party affiliation, race, religion. And I think that's the, the heart of what America is. There's a feeling, uh, there seems to be a general frustration that people were not answering questions, that they were dodging questions. Was that getting to you? Did you really feel you heard answer, the answers that you needed? Yeah, I think I did. I think the part that resonated with me most in the debate was Mike Pence's inability to answer the question on why America, as one of the wealthiest nations in the world, has one of the highest death rates in the world. Um, we have over 200,000 deaths and counting, and I think it's really difficult to answer that question. Why, why couldn't we be more prepared? Why, didn't we, why did we dismantle the pandemic response team? We have the resources, we have the tools, but our leadership is inadequate, and our leadership can't answer for the actions they've taken over these last few months. Uh, Gabriel, I know uh, you're a committed Republican. I think you're regional director for the Republican National Hispanic Assembly. What was your feeling about tonight specifically? I think that um, it was a lot more I'd say civil, uh, for lack of a better term, that we saw from both uh, in comparison to the uh, presidential debate and now the vice presidential debate. I think that uh, people were able to get a clear understanding. And I think that uh, certainly that Vice President uh, Mike Pence was able to really speak to moderate and undecided voters as opposed to Kamala Harris, who I feel was speaking more so, more so towards her base with talking points rather than whole thoughts. You'll have asked, been asked this question many times, I'm sure, but you will be voting for a president who's referred to Mexicans, for instance, as rapists and criminals. That's OK? Uh, no, I mean, that's not really I, I wouldn't say that's entirely true, because when we find the entire quote of that, uh, we find that Mexico has, in fact, been sending people uh, that are criminals that they do not want to deal with. And they have sent people who some are who, who when the president said some, I assume, are good people who actually do come here to work. And that needs to be, you know, that needs to be really highlighted here. But what doesn't sit well with me is when you have people like Joe Biden get up there and says that he doesn't want his kids to grow up in a racial jungle. I think that should be highlighted more than something that the Mexican government has actually had a record of doing. Were you not surprised immigration was not covered at all tonight? Uh, yes, I would. I would say that um, I would surprise. Though, then again, I am sure that in the next uh, presidential debate between uh, Trump and Biden, we will see that come up again. Kerry, what do you want to see from the next debate? 
Well, I was promised uh, insults and <laughs> grandstanding. No, I'm just kidding. I would, I would like to see. Here's what I'd like to see, and here's why I'm sw I've switched and I've decided to vote for Trump. I want to see my party, the Democratic Party, return to liberal values. So I agree with the other voter who said that we're living in dangerous times and we're moving away from democracy. The problem is that I see that primarily coming from the left at this point, and it terrifies me. So I want to see a return to the principles of individualism instead of collectivism. I want to see a return to the values of free speech in this country, and I don't currently see the Democrats supporting that. That's why I say I believe Trump is the most liberal option at the moment. I would love to return to my old party. I just think they've been corrupted. Do you trust Mr. Trump? That's, a, that's as a as a friend, as a uh, husband. I, I I don't think I would. <laughs> as a as a president, I I trust him more than I do Biden and Harris. That's for sure. I, I was very pleased with his executive action against critical race theory being pushed in our federal labs with taxpayer funded dollars. That was very important to me. There have been a few things that it, it took me a while. This wasn't a short path. It took me a while to come around from being a person who thought of him as a demagogue to actually looking at his record. And as the other voter pointed out, looking at some of the mischaracterizations of his quotes in the media and finding out the full context of what he said. And once I started going down that rabbit hole, it you know once you realize that the press is lying to you about certain things, it, it makes you question everything you've ever believed that they've told you before. And so it's been a really long journey for me to go from uh, hating the man to sort of reluctantly <laughs> telling people and even being willing to tell people, yeah, I'm voting for him. Kerry, Gabriel, Anna, thank you very much indeed. Anna, Tilly, forgive me, I would like to come back to you and we're just a slightly shorter time, but th it's been a long night for all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.